Morning guys, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm gonna do a little bit of unboxing and a little bit of laminating. So this arrived uh, a little while ago, and I do believe this is going to be my timbre doors. I've ordered two timbre doors, one at 300 millimeters wide and one at 500 millimeters wide, and I have never ever seen up close and personal a timbre door before. So I thought I would uh, do the unboxing here and uh, we can look at what they, or we can see what they look like together. Should be quite fun. Um, right, I've gone for the silver color because the, the laminate I'm using is like a, a, a gray, a wood grain gray. So I thought gray and silver would go together quite well. So here we are, two packages and two little nuts and bolts and things and some runners. And here we go, these little curly things which the tumble doors curl into. So let's, uh, let's open the small one and see what they look like. Now I'm hoping, I've kind of got a vision in my head of fitting these being relatively straightforward. I'm hoping the reality will be the case. So I think what we've got here is essentially these little plastic legs that kind of all slide into each other. Um, and they're held on the back by what looks like two pieces of duct tape, which is, I'm kind of not impressed by that simply because duct tape after about three years starts to get dry and powdery and fall apart. Um, so but I'm, I'm going to assume that the linkages, once they're in place, um, it doesn't matter if the duct tape falls off, they'll still work. Um, hopefully. I have seen more expensive ones and they have cloth tape on the back. But uh, I don't know, it's pure theory at the moment because I really don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm just, uh, this is, like I say, this is my first introduction to uh, Tamba Doors. So what I decided to do was um, I'm going to fit the Tamba Doors on the bench here while uh, it's flat and I, I've got full access to it. I thought these are gonna be quite difficult to fit if the unit has been assembled and then I've got to kind of go up underneath and stand on my head and kind of revert, put, put screws in back to front and all the rest of it. If I can do it, I will fit these timber doors um, here after I've laminated and trimmed the wood. So you'll be pleased to know that uh, these have been now um, cut out obviously and I had a little go with the router this morning and I've put the grooves in all of the places where the grooves have got to go in order for the trim to fit and actually that was my very first time using a router and it turned out um, to be actually quite easy and quite enjoyable. That router bit went through those edges like a hot knife through butter so it was really quite easy to do. So I think what I'm going to do, just to start with, is I'm going to work on a small piece just to get things underway. So this is going to be the upright, and I've decided, as far as trim goes, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to leave excess trim uh, off of this one, and then once the, because this, this thing here marries up with this down here. Um, but in order to have a single piece of trim at the join, I'm just going to insert trim into this and then let a load of trim hang out so that it can then go into that join over there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, before I can trim this, I need to laminate it. Right then, so this is the laminate that I'm gonna be using. Uh, hopefully you can see the color of it. It's kind of like a, dark grey brown sort of uh, wood grain and I bought a 20, I think it's a 25 metre roll, a 15 metre roll. So I'm hoping this is going to be enough but I've got a feeling it might not be, I may have to get a second one but we'll see how I get on with this one first. I remember doing this from last time, it's very very easy uh, for bits to fall out and cause a little bump. So I think what I'm going to do is especially where I've, I've gone through and uh, cut out all these little things. I'm gonna go and get my little air gun uh, or my little airbrush and I'm just gonna blow out all of these little holes and everything. So hopefully that will minimize any danger of any tiny little particles 
getting on the board as the, um, the laminate goes over it. Right then, I knew this would come in handy. Um, I haven't done a lot of the spray painting with it, but hopefully, um, so I'm just gonna go in there. Yeah, quite a lot coming out. So, good to know. So I'd rather it, it flew out now than when I've got the sticky back of that off and it all sticks to that. So um, I think this is a good call. Right, my living room floor is going to be pretty uh, sawdusty, but that's all right. There's nothing a Hoover can't fix. is about as clean as I can get it. Now the laminate or the, the wood grain is going to go floor to ceiling so this is obviously ceiling floor so it's got to go this way. Um, so what I'm going to do is roll out a piece the right size. What I love about this laminate is it's got all these these squares and lines on it so you can actually really get a good uh, line up. Now I could use a cutting board actually uh, that would make life easier because then I can just use a scalpel and do that. Let me go and get a cutting board. Right then, there we go. That's interesting I just uh, went out to the van to uh, to get this and I was chatting with a guy that was fitting the uh, the guttering and uh, on a neighbour's house and uh, he was really interested in the van and having a look at everything. He's thinking about doing it himself and he saw all these ideas through so we ended up having a little bit of a brainstorming session and he's going to come and fix my gutters. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to get um, uh, a new downpipe put in uh, because my, my guttering kind of leaks out of the end and it won't... I've, I've been trying for years to get it fixed and it won't happen so he's going to come in and put a new downpipe um, in. So there we go, killed two birds with one stone there. Now because these are being like edged on the ends and we've got the uh, the profiling to go on the edges as well, I don't actually need to fold this laminate around so it literally only needs to do the very front face uh, which is ideal. So anything that overhangs is actually going to be trimmed off anyway. Right, there we go. So now the fun begins. Right, I'll just do one last blast. Make sure there's no bits that shouldn't be anywhere. Now I've seen that out with the packet, I really like that colour. One final. Last, and then we're just going to go for it. So, let's just make sure that's lined up. Okay, and we're on, we're doing it. I'm just peeling as I go. Now the, there is a danger that the this stuff can sag um, in the little bits where there are no things to stick against. But I'm kind of hoping. Oops. Oh look, I've already got a uh, I've got a little bump on there already. I have to take care of that with a little pin. Actually, you know what? I'm, I think I'm going to be better off doing this with my hands. Nope. Ah. Am I going to make a right pig's ear of this now? I 
I've got a crease, I've got a crease. All right. Ah, uh, there we go. I think I think I've got it. Okay, all the flat bits are all flat. That's good. Okay, so there's no creases now. Excellent. I have got a tiny, tiny little air bubble there. That's got rid of it. And I felt another one here. Nope. Okay, now I can go over with the... Right then, now the fun begins. I've got to cut out these. Holes. Flush. With the edges. That looks really good. All oh, right, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. This looks really good. Let's get the edge. Obviously these edges are gonna disappear inside the aluminium profiling. The only concern I have, and it's hopefully only a slight concern, is whether the aluminium profiling will still accept this with the additional width that the laminate has, has created. Hopefully it won't be a problem. Because it was a pretty easy fit with, without it. So um, I'm hoping this is not going to act as some sort of like a, a wedge. There we go. One laminated piece of board. Uh, I think that looks rather good, don't you? I'm pleased with that and that's exactly how I saw it in my head turning out. Um, so now I've just got to put the edging strip on it and then we're good to go. So this is the edging strip I'm going to be using. This is a, a silver colour. I think that's going to that's going to go just fine, colour-wise. But what I need is a hammer or a rubber mallet. Let me see what I can find. Okay, so I've got a like a, a rubberish uh, camping mallet here. It's got a rubber coating on it, but I've wrapped a cloth around it just so that I don't mark this edge trimming. So I think. <clears throat> I'll put the, this is, this is T-shaped edge trimming and it's actually got a lip that goes both sides. Um, so I'm going to start from the top in the middle. Let's do it that way around. And hopefully, it's quite flexible this stuff as well, so hopefully it'll go over the, uh, the edge of the laminate and not Pull it off. Um, oh, I lied. Hang on. I have to make a point of tucking it in. There we go. There we go. It's on. Just got to make sure that lip is over the edge of the laminate before I hit it. Otherwise, it will pull the laminate off on the edge.
Now obviously what I am going to have to be careful with is when I'm hitting this on edges like this because obviously these are this is a weak point in the structure and I'll have several of those weak points um, on there so just got to be careful because I hit it in the right direction. All right, I've actually figured this will be easier to do on carpet. Um, certainly less noisy for the neighbours anyway. And the carpet's useful, it sort of acts as a grip to stop the, the wood sliding around. Okay, there we go, oh, job done. And that's pretty much what I had in mind. Uh, so obviously it's gonna take a little bit of time to get the rest of these done. So I'm gonna go away and uh, get all this done. I've gotta do the big one as well. It's probably gonna take me the rest of the day, I think. But then hopefully, um, once this is done, it's ready for assembly. And that will be the beginnings of the, um, the main uh, kitchen galley bit of furniture. Right, there we go, that's the first one done. And uh, this is the additional um, trim, which is gonna marry up with this one. Now I've done this one now, so that's all looking great. I've trimmed everything around. That's the one it's gonna marry up with. And uh, I managed to get it all trimmed off without actually breaking any of these weak parts. Although I've still got the braces um, in the back, which the braces are going to have to come off when it goes into the aluminium profile. But uh, for now, the braces were there just to, uh, you know, keep it strong. But yeah, I'm really, really chuffed with that. And the silver uh, trim has gone on really well. And uh, all I've got to do now is lift it up onto the deck here, or the desk, or the bench, or table, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, I'm going to attempt to put the timbre doors on. So wish me luck. That is the timbre door, the, the 300 timbre door fitted. It was very, very tight um, getting it in here because uh, I've even had to take into account the profiling. It's literally, it, it's, I had to, to build these uh, pieces of furniture board and then the distance between that and the door, I only just had enough to work with. Um, so it was pretty tight. Wasn't so bad on this side, um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty tight, but I've managed to do it um, and it should be fine. I haven't actually seen it from the other side yet, but yeah, I actually had to put a little bit of um, corner profiling on here just so that I could judge where to put this and that's all it left, left me with. So um, it was a quite a tight fit, but I think we're good to go. Um, so all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have to, um, well, I'm gonna assume I'm gonna have to cut two more of these um, for the timbre door here, but this should be a lot easier to fit because I've got a lot more room to play with. Um, so uh, I'll get on with that and then we'll go from there. Right then, that's it, we're done. I think I've done everything I can to this front fascia uh, that needs doing, um, apart from removing this one brace. I had to remove the brace on that side um, because of the, the, the closeness of the uh, the aluminium edge here. Um, but timbre doors, that's the first time I've ever got involved with timbre doors. Um, they work beautifully. Um, so that's really good, I'm really happy with that. Um, what I would say was they were a lot more, but saying that they weren't difficult to fit, but I did have to think outside the box a bit. Now I have no idea if I fitted those timbre doors correctly, but I eat for each one of these mechanisms, I had to cut out a little piece of wood, like a furniture board. I've glued it down and screwed it down. So hopefully it'll be, um, you know, good to go. Um, but yeah, they were a lot more complicated to fit than I thought they were. I was sort of half expecting these black circle things and these runners to come with little screw fittings so that um, you could screw them to the surface. But in this particular case, because I've used 
um, the edging strip with, with the lip going over both sides, I actually needed to raise them up a little bit anyway, um, so that uh, when they sat on the side here, actually I had to put about three millimeters or four millimeters, so they were sat back away from the edging strip of the, uh, the openings. Um, so they work, well you can see there, look. so they work beautifully and uh, I have no idea what they look like from the front. So I'm going to flip this over and we'll get a final look at it, but it's pretty much now ready for fitting in the van. Now, the creation of this has taken me about three days to build this from scratch. I'm just hoping it'll all work when it gets, when I put it in the van, I'm hoping I'm not going to come across any problems, but ho hopefully this should now slot straight in um, and we should be good to go. Let's have a look at it from the front. Oh yes, there is no getting away from it. I am very pleased with how that looks. Um, absolutely pleased to punch. So uh, let's see if we can open one of these doors. Uh, oops, <laughs> that has fallen off the little, the little block there. Right, okay, so that's something I may have to take into account. Um, I've actually got the, the roller bit up here. Um, I could have made it go a little bit further, but the I didn't want the mechanism to be too high up because I want this to be a, a pocket. Um, so that works, and that one, it's... Oh, there we go. That works fine. So yeah, you've got the roundy bit here. It sort of intrudes a little bit. I could have made that a little bit higher, uh, especially here, because I think the sink only sort of comes down about that deep. Um, but never mind, there's, there's, there's plenty of spare room in there, so I'm sort of, that, that, that's absolutely fine, I'm quite happy with that. Um, but yeah, I think the only thing I want to change is this little block here. Um, it's obviously not tall enough because of the way that I, I sat this door away from the, um, the lip of this thing. So I may have to rethink that little block, but that's no biggie. Yeah, very pleased. So combine that with this and obviously I can't join it properly at the moment but yeah that's what that will look like um, and obviously the, the, I'll put the trim in when it's ready to go but I've got to be very very careful oops I'm gonna to have to be very very careful of hitting the trim in there because obviously I could end up breaking this off so um, I'll, uh, I, um, I may even trim down the little T piece just there and perhaps even glue it in place there just so that I don't have to because um, you have to tap it quite hard to actually get the the trim piece in so I'll figure it out I'll figure it out anyway but yeah very very pleased with that right we're in failing light the light is running out I've had to put the ISO up to 6400 just so you can see this but uh, we've got uh, the makings of a cabinet and I'm very very pleased with the way this has turned out so far and uh, I've even put the um, the RCD unit up on the wall there that was the inlet for the the socket on the side of the van so that's all ready to go it's got a bunch of wire with it but um, yeah the the main unit is in place it's got all of its covering coverings on and uh, all I've got to do now is concentrate on building the shelving systems inside um, which is going to be hopefully relatively straightforward. I managed to cut the hole out, you probably can't see that, I managed to cut the hole out for the little arm um, that goes on the door there and these cabinets open up perfectly. I even put another little stop down there on the floor uh, which stops the thing falling down and it also protects this. If I kick this it's quite weak uh, so if I kick it it's actually something to kick um, kick up against and I should put another one here tomorrow um, just in case I kick that because obviously there's nothing stopping that from um, being damaged. So uh, I think that was a good day. Uh, like I say it's taken me what three three maybe four days of solid work to get from a pile of white furniture board to this unit but I am so chuffed with this unit it looks so good I'm really pleased with it even though it hasn't even got a surface on it at the moment um, very very pleased and uh, yes yeah, so tomorrow we'll be doing more uh, like I said I'll be 
putting um, shelves and things, all the finishing details. I'm not sure whether I'm going to film that or not. It's probably not going to be a lot to um, uh, see, but uh, it, I know it will take the whole day to do and possibly longer. Uh, so hopefully the next video you see, uh, this will be ideally finished or pretty close to being finished. Um, so uh, yeah, good stuff. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for all the uh, comments on the previous videos. Lots of people are very curious about uh, how the van build is, uh, is unfolding and going. And uh, so uh, thanks for all your, your comments. It kind of helps me and encourages me to keep making the videos. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.